Hey everybody, welcome to Flying Miata. My name is Kyle and today we are installing a set of Flying Miata ND sway bars. Before we get started, I wanted to go over what comes in the kit. This is the full ND sway bar kit. Included is the front and the rear sway bar, their affiliated brackets and bushings, a packet of bushing grease, and some locks that keep the front sway bar from shifting side to side during use. The tools you're going to need for this job are various metric sockets and wrenches, a ratchet, a small flat blade screwdriver, and a 5mm hex key. We're going to start with the front sway bar. This one's pretty tricky and there's a lot of different ways out there to do it. I'm going to show you a way that we prefer that makes it fairly easy and it doesn't require you getting an alignment afterward. If you are replacing your shocks and springs, obviously you should get an alignment afterward anyway, but regardless, I'm going to show you this method. If you're having trouble at any point during this install, we have an alternative set of instructions. It re involves removing more pieces, but it gives you more space to be able to remove and install the bar. Step one is getting the car up and off the ground. You can either use a lift or jack and jack stands. Just make sure you're never under a car supported only by a jack. Once you have it up, we're going to take off the front wheel on both sides. And next, we're going to take off the forward fender liners. They're held in place with these plastic rivets. Using a small flat blade screwdriver, you can get underneath the head of the plastic rivet and just a quick pop, pull the center section out. Now you can take your fingers and just wiggle it out. I have these others popped, so we'll go ahead and pull them all. Got one back here, one underneath, and one up front. Now what's holding this in is a set of screws. You can either use a Phillips screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket to remove those. Now, you can pull this out and set it aside. I've already taken care of the passenger side fender liner. It's a mirror image of the driver. Now it's time to remove the center splash pan. It's got two screws up on the front. Again, either M8 socket or Phillips screw. We have four of the bolts per side. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And I forgot to mention these are a 10 millimeter socket. The last thing holding this on is two plastic rivets. These ones are a little different than the ones in the fender liners and they like to come apart. So make sure you don't lose your pieces. Now the center section can come down. Our next step is to remove these two plastic panels. There's one per side. They're held in with two bolts that require a 10 millimeter wrench or socket. The forward one you can get to with a socket. The one on the back is hard to get to and I use a gear wrench for. We'll repeat this on the other side. Our next step is to remove the lower radiator mount. These require a 12 millimeter socket. We're also gonna be removing the middle radiator mount, which requires a 10 millimeter socket. This can be a little tricky to get undone because of the AC line and the pegs. You can manipulate the radiator a little bit if necessary and fish it out. Same thing goes for this side. Lower radiator bracket and center radiator bracket need to come out. Your radiator will lower some, but it will not fall out and it will not put any stress on anything. So it's okay. The next component that needs to be moved out of the way is this intermediary pipe that joins the two sections of the lower radiator hose. We're working on an ND2, which does not have a coolant temp sensor in, in this pipe. ND1s do have a coolant temp sensor, so you will need to unplug that sensor first. Next, there are two bolts holding this pipe to this frame rail. Both bolts come in from the top. One is just in front of the sway bar, one is behind. Now we probably won't be able to show you the one that's behind on camera. We can't get the quite right angle. It's a 10 millimeter bolt head. There's one. 
there's two. Now the pipe can be pulled toward the driver's side a little bit and then lowered down below the chassis rail here. The next thing that's helpful to get out of the way is the electrical for the power steering system. We're gonna do undo these connectors. We're gonna pull off the harness from the rack itself and from the fan shroud a little further up so we can let this harness dangle. The primary connector has a safety tab that needs to be pulled toward the driver's side and then it can be depressed and released. I've already got the other connector off. It's just a simple tab to depress. Got this harness clip removed from the rack. Use a little screwdriver. Pop this guy off the fan shroud. We're gonna let it dangle. All right, I think we've gotten enough out of the way. Let's go ahead and get the sway bar out of here. I'm gonna start by removing the end link as it attaches to the sway bar. Using a 14 millimeter socket, go and remove the nut. Now, if your end link ball joint rotates and the nut won't come off, use a five millimeter Allen on the inside of the stud to keep the stud stationary while you remove the nut. Pop out the ball joint and push it out of the way. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Now we're on to removing the brackets. Again, a 14 millimeter socket and a nut on each side. The lower one's easy to get to. The top one, you'll need a box wrench for. At this point, we'll go ahead and remove the bracket. The bushing is vulcanized to the sway bar and cannot be removed easily. Now we'll repeat this process for the passenger side. We are now at the point where we're gonna start moving the sway bar. Now it's very important at this point that you're aware of both ends of the sway bar, where they're at, so they're not pulling on anything, scratching anything, or pushing into anything that could cause damage. Step one with moving the sway bar is to get the ends of the sway bar up and over the tie rod ends so they're pointing down. It may be helpful to steer the car to be able to achieve this. And again, we'll work kind of both sides at the same time, like so. Our next goal in movement is to rotate the arms of the bar forward and push the bar as far back as possible. We're gonna end up pulling the bar out of the driver's side wheel well. The biggest thing you're gonna fight against is this bushing wanting to squeeze through this narrow way. Our goal is to get this arm up and over the frame rail next to the radiator. Be careful of your arm over here as it might wanna start snagging on some of these wires for the DRL. Now that we're up and over, we might need to shift the radiator. It's flexible to a point. And now that arm can drop down. Now our goal is to get the bar out of the wheel well. So we're gonna just start moving it that direction, keeping an eye on where the ends of the bar are so they're not damaging anything. Voila. The installation is simply the opposite of removal. It should be a little easier since we're not dealing with those pesky bushings. To orient the bar correctly, line it up with the arms parallel to the ground. The hump of the bar should be up. Go ahead and feed in the bar and slowly fish it backwards. Now, once we get it to the frame rail on the passenger side, carefully rotate the bar up. Again, paying attention to both sides. We get it up and over the rail. Now slide the bar forward and get it up and over the tie rods. And then we can slide the bar back into position where we will next add our bushings and brackets. Included with the kit is a packet of grease. It's, there's enough there for all four bushings. So go ahead and apply about a quarter of it to each bushing. I usually apply it around the entire inside. 
and I take a finger with a glove because this grease is sticky and just make sure the entire inside diameter gets coated in grease. Next, we'll align the slit with the bar, slide it over, clock it to where the flat is on the subframe, and add the bracket. We'll get our hardware loosely started for now. And repeat for the passenger side. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall the end links. Our bar is adjustable. We recommend starting in the center hole. This bar has the potential to move around during operation, so we want to lock it into place. So the first thing we want to do is center the bar side to side. Now this is just going to be visual and it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to just choose a reference point and try to get our side to side gapping consistent. Because we left our bushings loose, you should be able to push and pull on it to get it into the position you'd like. Since it's where I want it, I'll go ahead and install these locks. Comes with a supplied Allen key and it comes apart. You can clamp it around the bar. You can get the fasteners driven in quite a ways without positioning the bracket. But once it starts to get snug, you want to make sure it's in place. Okay, so we're just about there. Clocking of this is pretty important. There are two flats. You want your bolts pointing forward and up, and you want your flat to be close to parallel, or if anything, a little bit angled closer to horizontal. The reason being, as your, your suspension is at full droop, as your suspension compresses, the sway bar will rotate up, which will make this rotate with it. So you want the flat to be about where it will be when you're at ride height, so it has plenty of room to move. It can be a little tedious to get these tight. As you can see, the two halves won't necessarily come into contact. You just want it to be tight to where it won't budge. Go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Now it's time to tighten down these sway bar brackets. The torque spec on these nuts is 32 to 45 pound feet. You'll have a hard time getting a torque wrench on this upper nut. And this lower nut's not that much easier. So you'll want to get as close as you can to that figure. All right, now we can start buttoning some other stuff up. I'm gonna start with the power steering system, electrical. Don't forget that there are two clips undone. Don't forget your lock tab. You wanna make sure these are seated well. It's a critical system. Now for the lower radiator hose pipe. It's easier if you do the front fastener first, so it can help locate the rear fastener. The sway bar is much bigger, it makes it harder to get this back bolt in. So if you're struggling like I am, there's a trick. We're gonna remove this panel here. It's got a number of 12 millimeter bolts that we will take off. Okay, finally, we got it. Now we'll go and tighten up the front. That back bolt on the water pipe is kind of a pain. So you might just experiment with various tools, uh, gear wrenches, uh, low profile ratchets to see what works best for you. And it is not easy, but 
You just gotta, gotta get to it. We don't have to worry about it, but if you're working on an ND1 or up through a 2018, remember you have a water temperature sensor down here. So don't forget to plug that back in. And now since I took this panel off to get access to that back bolt, let's go ahead and put it back on. Now I'm gonna move on to reinstalling the radiator middle brackets. We'll start on the driver's side here. You will have to press up on the radiator to be able to wiggle this into place. And now we'll do the other side. Now we'll do the lower radiator brackets. Now we'll do the side panels. In case you forgot, they are labeled left and right. And now for the center splash guard. It hooks on the front. I'm gonna start with the plastic rivets on the back. And now for the eight bolts. Now for the two screws. These require very little torque. If you apply too much, they will strip out. So get them just snug. Now for the forward fender liner. Got the plastic rivets and the screws. And just like the center section, don't over tighten the screws or they'll strip out. We'll go ahead and do the same thing to the passenger side and then put the wheels on. And that will complete the front. Now let's go ahead and move on to the back. Here we are at the back of the car, ready to do the rear sway bar. I do have the back wheel and tire off, not necessary for the installation or removal, but we just did it so you can see better. So here's the bar. We're gonna begin by removing the end links on each side. Similar to the front, these end links, the ball sometimes spins and the nut won't come off. If that's the case, you can use a five millimeter hex key to hold the stud stationary while you use a wrench to remove the nut and repeat for the passenger side. So the nuts that hold the bracket onto the rear require a 12 millimeter socket. So we'll go ahead and remove the two nuts on each side. Now to remove the bar, simply slide it off the studs and work its way over the exhaust pipe, just like that. So unlike the front, we're gonna to wait to put the bar in until we've greased our bushings and have the brackets ready to go. So let's start with greasing the bushings. Hopefully you should at least have half a packet of grease left over, or maybe a little under is fine, since these are smaller bushings. Same concept, a bunch of grease squirted in there. Now it's a little small for fingers, maybe a pinky, but you wanna just make sure there's enough grease in there so your sway bar doesn't squeak. Do the same for the other side. Now these are a little stiffer, same concept, there's a slit. Go ahead and try to get it peeled open and around the bar. Now there is an orientation on the rear bar as well. It's a little harder to see, but if you hold your bar up, you should see that the end is angled slightly. And you want the angle to be pointing in at the top, out at the bottom, like this. So I'm gonna feed the bar in. I have the brackets in my hand so they don't fall off. Make sure and get the ends up into position. Clock the bushings. Get the nuts started. Now we'll go ahead and hook up the end links. Again, we recommend starting in the middle hole. You can make adjustments later as you see necessary. Tighten it down. 
and go to the other side. Now all we have to do is tighten the brackets. That wraps up the rear and also wraps up our entire sway bar install. I hope this has been a helpful video for you. If you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email or give us a call. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to these videos. Thank you and we'll see you next time.